Okay, let's talk about property descriptors. So what is a property descriptor? Well, it's extra information about properties inside of objects. So I'm going to go through a lot of these comments and explain what some of this stuff means. But to start with, let's take the example where we have a simple object called obj. Inside of it, there's one property called name, and its value is Bob. All right. Now, most of the time, that's all we deal with is just what's the name of the property, what's its value. But there are actually other things that can be measured and controlled and changed and updated about this property. So the value is one of these possible things that you can change. So we've got data descriptors and accessor descriptors. You can choose to define the four data ones, or you can choose to define the four accessor ones. You can't combine this. There's actually six different ones. You can't do all six at the same time. It's this set of four or this set of four. So by default, when you create an object and you create a property inside of it, it gets all the default values. Value is this, Bob, that's what it is showing. So if I said log out my object, it's going to show me, hey, you've got a property in there called name, its value is Bob, or we can say object name to get just the value of that. If we run that, there we go. There's my object, there's the value. So that's actually this one accessor. There are other ones. By default, writable is set to true meaning you are allowed to change this value. Configurable means I'm allowed to change these other properties or these other properties. Enumerable means if I'm doing a for loop, it will loop through that property that I've defined or all the properties that I've defined as enumerable. By default, this is true. By default, this is true. By default, this is true. And you set the value as something here. If you haven't set the value, it's default is undefined, just like when you declare a variable. The accessor ones are when you want to define a getter and a setter method. So a get and a set for updating and reading the value of a property. If you do that, then you're not allowed to set value, and you can't change whether or not it's writable, because clearly, if I'm defining a set method for the property, it's going to be writable. Get will retrieve it, set will update it. And then you can still set it as configurable or enumerable. Configurable, I'm allowed to change these properties after the fact. Enumerable, it will show up in the list when I loop through. So if there was another property here, let's say Bob is 45, and I were to put this inside of a loop. So for let prop in obj. There we go. This is going to be my log and I will write out the property. There we go. Name, age. Those are my two properties that I have in here. By default they were both enumerable. But what if I wanted to loop through and I didn't want it to show up in a loop? I want the property to be there. I want it to be writable so I can update it but I don't want it to show up when somebody loops through. It's a special kind of property, and I want to hide that. So, coming inside here, what I'm going to be using is this method here. There's a method on the object, object, and it allows you to say, for this object, here's the property, property that I want to create, and these are the properties inside this object here, I will define either this set or this set for the property that I'm creating. If you wanted to create a whole bunch of these properties at the same time, you can say here's the object and then define an object filled with objects. So what I would define in here, this would just be a series of those objects. Get on property names. If you wanted to list all of the properties inside of an object, so you pass in your variable, and this will give you back a list. If you wanted to get a specific descriptor, you pass in the object variable and the property that you're looking for. 
So in this case, name or age would be the property that I'm looking for, and it would give me the descriptor for that property. Or descriptors would give me a list of all of the properties. All right, so let's create that additional one here. Now that we, we've talked a little bit about these, I'm going to do this. So I'm going to define a new property. Now, obj is my variable name here. It's not always going to be written obj. This is just the name that I've used for my variable, so that's what I put inside here. Prop name. In here, I will say I'm going to define the property called test. And then inside here, I'm going to define either this set or this set. So let's start with this one. So I'm going to set the value for test equal to shagadelic. Then I'm going to set writable equal to true. I'm going to set configurable equal to true, but enumerable, I'm going to set that to false. So this is not going to show up inside my loop when I do the loop here. Ah, name, age, but test did not show up. So I didn't get test, but after my loop, if I were to say, give me object.test, there it is. There is my obj right here. The enumerable property test is not showing up. But the value is, if I go directly to it, obj.test, there it is. There's the property. So obviously it exists, it's just not enumerable. It doesn't show up. It's kind of a behind the scenes property. So we can define properties and change these values. And these are called the uh, property descriptors. And these are the data ones. The accessor ones, if I was going to do an example of one of those, let's say object.define property. For obj, I'm going to define a property called frank. And then inside here, I define these. So I'll say configurable is going to be true. And I'll make this one enumerable. Now my get and set, my get is going to be a function. I'm just going to use the uh, arrow function syntax, and I'm going to return this dot value. So this will refer to my object, and value is referring to the value property that's inside of here. Now I haven't defined the value property in here, but that's because I'm defining a getter and setter. I'm not allowed to explicitly say value. So by default, its value will be undefined. And then for set, all right, when you want to set the value, I will be passing a value inside of this. And then I'm going to be inside my function here, my, inside my method, I'm going to be saying that this dot value, so object, and then the value property descriptor is going to be set to what I just passed in. Or if you want, you could even tack something onto the end of it, like that. All right, we've added two properties now. We've added test and we've added frank. Actually, sorry, that should be inside quotation marks because that is a string. That is the name of the property we're creating. So there's test and there's frank. And I'm going to loop through. Name, age, and frank will appear in this loop. Obj.test will give you shagadelic. And obj.frank is going to give us undefined because we have not set a value for that. So here we are. There's the name, there's the age, and frank is defined as having a getter and setter. It is undefined. Actually, this is a little bit off the side of my screen here. There's the other part of it. Undefined. All right. Now, if I were to Q, 
give it a value like this. What I'm doing here is I am actually going to be passing this string into the set function for Frank. So this string is going to come up here and then shagadelic plus baby is going to be set as the value. So when we write out obj.frank, we should get shagadelic baby. And there it is. Okay, so we have all these methods that we can play around with, object or keys and values. This is if you wanted to get a list of all the enumerable properties, if you wanted to get a list of all the values of the enumerable properties. If you want to find out if a property is enumerable, you can put your variable here, you put the property name that you're looking for to find out if it is. If you want to test and see if a variable has a property, call this method. So object properties can be writable, enumerable, configurable. We've looked at doing that down before. So configurable and enumerable are available here on both. And if you're defining a data descriptor, then it's also writable can be um, defined as true or false. Now that's for the properties. Objects themselves can be extensible, frozen, or sealed. Extensible meaning you can continue to add new properties, define new properties, change the things on properties. If you change this, like you can test to see if it is extensible, but you can also prevent extensions, meaning nobody can add new properties to the object that you've defined. Once you have said that the object is um, got extensions prevented, then you can no longer add properties to that. Related to that is frozen and sealed. So a sealed object means that properties cannot be deleted or configured, but they still are writable. So you can't change them, you can't get rid of them, you can't say delete object property, but you can change the value. So whether it's got getters or setters, or if it's just a writable variable, if it's sealed, you can still change the value. Uh, frozen means you can't delete it, you can't configure it, configure it, and it is no longer writable either. There, and that is everything that you would ever want to know about property descriptors. So I encourage you to uh, experiment with these, get a little bit more comfortable with using them. Uh, the first time that you look at them or experiment with them, it can be a little bit overwhelming, but um, it really comes down to you're either doing this or you're doing this. It's value writable, configurable, enumerable, or configurable, enumerable, and then defining get and set methods. Um, using the object properties afterwards is the same as it would have been had you just used this and said ob.name equals some value. But internally it's a function or an object method that you're using. Okay, so thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments.